So my work is at the intersection of learning science and AI, so I'm going to pick up where Lee left off, talking about how AI can be used to reduce inequality by personalizing education. So with technology, uh, it's uh, very easy uh, as a computer scientist to think about uh, distributing our systems in a global economy. We want to simply build it and parachute it into remote sites around the world in need of education. And I'm not joking, this is an actual project uh, from a university in computer science that I will not name tonight. <laughs> uh, but my work has shown that it's actually critical to work towards understanding the social and cultural factors of the classroom and using those to build our AI in ways that address the needs of individual students if we want to actually make sure that we can show long-term success for education. And so here's an example of one of the systems that we've built for learners in sub-Saharan Africa, where I've spent quite a bit of time doing field work to learn ways to address literacy uh, that are appropriate for these students. So um, in here, in this clip, you can see that we're actually using our AI to do voice recognition specifically for Swahili-speaking children. And with this system, CMU is one of five finalists for the Global Learning X Prize. <laughs> and, and we've just started a field trial with 200 villages in Tanzania. And as we've been developing this system, what we've seen is how important it is to, a to use AI to, to do knowledge tracing, or that is tracking everything that a student knows and can do in real time. But also, what we need to do is address every aspect of learning with our AI. So that includes students' emotional states. We can detect confusion, frustration, uh, or engagement through tracking facial expressions, movements, and posture. And we can even include their social experiences with other learners. And we know that all of these things have an enormous impact on how students learn and how much they learn. Now, AI systems for education are not just for the student. We're also working on systems that unlock superpowers for teachers. And so, you know, if you've ever been a teacher, you know you wish you could have eyes in the back of your head. And that's sort of what we're giving them right now. We can feed back the data on the actions that the teachers have taken. We can give them feedback to improve their own learning and teaching over time and focus their attention on where it's needed most in the classroom. So one of the most amazing opportunities that comes out of this type of work is the ability to make things visible that the teacher may not explicitly be aware of. So are they focusing only on the front of the classroom or only on the loudest students? Which children are not being given the same opportunity for learning as the rest of the students? And where can we support the potential of every child to learn? So finally, we're also developing systems that can interact with students as partners in learning. Uh, and we can even let students get the chance to act as a teacher themselves and gain a lot of confidence by teaching uh, one of our systems. And so one of the interesting things that we found in our studies with children uh, working together to learn mathematics is that after students are, are friends, uh, it turns out that the ones who trash talk with each other are the ones who learn the most. And so, this is true. Uh, um, it turns out that what we can actually do is build systems that take advantage of this fact, build up a friendship, and then they can throw it down themselves. <laughs> so, you can see here one of our systems that's working towards doing that beyond just being able to do the math problems itself. So we need systems that can build rapport with our students, that can get them through crises of self-confidence. Um, we can even uh, build systems that can engage in productive conflict with our students and help lead them to a new understanding of the material. And these are really difficult processes that we know are critical for learning 
21st century skills, the things that every child needs to learn in today's world in order to be able to deal with these very issues that Lee was talking about. And yet there isn't always time or space in a traditional classroom to do this.